People often imagine that castle walls were just left as bare stone, but in fact they weren't. They were plastered, painted and decorated. The process of making medieval paint begins in a quarry. This is a sandstone with a really high iron content. In it, we find pockets of ochre. This is iron oxide, like rust, and the ochre is one of the main ingredients in pigment making. First, the ochre is crushed into a fine powder. The finer the particles in paint, the better the paint will be. Once ground up, water is added. Then the mixture is sieved. This is the exact opposite of making pasta at home. At home, when you sieve your pasta, you then keep it for your meal. Here, what's going to end up in the sieve will be discarding. What's needed are the tiny particles suspended in the water. Once it's dry, it's going to look something like this. You can see that all the water has evaporated leaving just this very fine crust, which will then be ground into the fine pigment which is used to make paint. But ochre's colour palette doesn't end there. If it's heated, something magical happens. Yellow ochre turns red. And heating it for even longer, creates a whole spectrum of colours. It's been burnt for over 72 hours at 1,000 degrees Celsius, and that gives us this incredible purple colour. To turn the pigment into paint, it's bound together with egg and tree sap. A popular motif in the Middle Ages was the use of stones and roses. That's where you paint on blocks of stone to make it look like you could afford to pay stonemasons to produce dress blocks of stone and then decorate them with five-petaled flowers. So, medieval castles were far from the gloomy places we imagine today. They were full of colour and light. <laughs> 